Ladies and gentlemen, today is July 7th, 2015. And this is the Canyon Kale Show, episode 244, where we learn to be better artists. Today is Tutorial Tuesday, and I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. And today we are going to be jumping back into the pool with none other than Pool Party Ruru, or her working title name, Wena. But you didn't hear that from me. That's a secret. All right. Uh, but before we get into the coloring process, which is what we're going to be going over today, we have a very special place that we need to take a stroll down. That's right. It's the lovely lane. You guys are so awesome submitting your beautiful work to the Facebook by liking that, typing in that tiny URL at the bottom, back by the Facebook blue. You can go like the page, submit all kinds of art and handsome men to the page and it will get featured on the show and I will take a look at it. I will take a look at it. You guys are freaking awesome. So thank you very much for submitting your art as always. And uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into Z tutorial, shall we? So let's go ahead and close this down. Very, very good. Yes, yes, pool party Lulu, pool party Lulu. Very interesting. We're just jumping right on into it, into it. Do I know what I'm gonna do today? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but we're just gonna wing it because I've taught you guys about colors so many times and basically, let's just go ahead and start breaking it down. Starting with masking. What is masking, you ask? Well, let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so masking is basically the art of creating stencils, creating shapes, creating shapes that you will then build off of, build your colors off of. So for example, let's go ahead and take a look at these masks. See, we have over here in our layer selection here, we have one main mask right here, and then we have all these arrows that are pointing back down to it. As I clear my throat, I'll explain to you what that means. So basically, all of these masks that are pointing back to this, think of this as the stencil, uh, the stencil mask, okay? If I take away all these colors, you'll see we're left with um, not only just, I, I separated this out into two masks and I will explain that in just a moment, but you'll see that it's basically just this gray mask that goes around the character. Now you could go through and do this manually if you were crazy and basically me five years ago, but now I've learned a much better way to do this. And I've taught you guys that many times. That's basically using your wand. Remember I talked about using the wand, selecting everything outside of it then expanding your selection and inverting it. Okay, that's basically how I go about doing it. And I've told you guys many times, we're not focusing on that today. If you wanna see that again, then you should go back to one of my other tutorials or just look up another one on YouTube. Today we're focusing on color, okay? So, so you have your mask, okay? So let me show you what happens to these colors if we un unclip them from the main mask. And please tell me I'm not muted. Okay, good, we're good, we're good, okay. Yeah, that's close. I always hate it when I'm like five minutes into a stream and then I, I'm like muted and, people, and the chat is like going crazy and I don't look over at it because I'm a bad boy. But anyway, let's see what happens when we unclip this. Oh, look at this. Jeez, it's so messy. What are we ever going to do? This is terrible. Well, basically what a clipping mask does is there's two ways that you can go about doing it. One is you can say, for instance, the purple tube right here. See how it goes outside of our hitherto mentioned uh, character mask, which is basically the inside of the lines. Basically, this is our stencil. This is our guide saying, okay, nothing that we paint over will go outside of these lines, right? But then we have this tube color and we want it to have the same properties as that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm right clicking it and I'm going to create clipping mask. Now watch what it does. Boom, see, it clips it right back to the same, it basically takes on the same properties as the mask behind it. And there you go, there's clipping mask. Not very well explained, but whatever. It's just kind of getting the, the idea out there, okay? So, all right, so let's go ahead and turn all our, uh, all our other colors on. And while I do that, I will explain something to you, something very, very important. And that is the color choices for my masks. These are all very, very well thought out. Well, not well thought out, but there's some thought put into it. Well is, you know, up for debate but they're basically, you'll notice they're all dark. They're all dark. You might say, oh, what color is Lulu's skin? Oh, she's like, I like this very, very light, pretty kind of like bluish purple skin, right? So you might say, oh, well, let's paint her skin that color, right? Let's paint the mask for her skin that color. 
But the reason why I don't do this is because if you paint it this color, then you're gonna have to go in, when you start shading the drawing, you're gonna have to start painting shadows. And as I've taught you guys before, that is not the best way to do things. We like to paint shadow first, and then light on top of it. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. All right, so continuing on up, all of my colors, I'm basically thinking, okay, what's the shadow color of this? Or what is the darker version of this color? Okay, so you'll notice like my whites, even my whites, like the eyes, they're not white, they're dropped down. They're kind of blue, they're kind of blue. And that's taking into account like the ambient sort of, it, we got a white background here, but we've also got water underneath, right? That's gonna be reflecting a lot of that light back up onto our character. So overall, I wanted to have my color palette revolving around that bluish. So that's why even with my whites, like the eyes and this color on the little octopus hat or squid hat, the splatoon hat, uh, I'm not going white. I'm actually bringing it down here, painting those shadows, paint the shadows in first or mask the shadows, mask the shadows. Okay, moving on up, we got the suit, we got the iris, eyes, all that stuff. And then now you'll see that I created another mask behind it. And the reason why I made a separate mask for all the tentacles and everything is because I just find it easier to, sometimes it's good to break down your character mask into a couple different uh, layers, so to speak. You have all these different layers that are the different colors, but then you wanna also think about uh, an extra layer behind it, especially when you have like the blue here, like going to the blue there. And that's like a whole nother thing. I don't even know if I should explain why I do that. It's more so something that's come about from experimentation and you guys should just do it. Try it out for yourself. All right, that's enough blabbing. We finally set up the piece. Now let's go ahead and get into coloring it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna consider our main light source. Where is it gonna be coming from? Where is it going to be coming from? Hey, you know just as well as I do. I, I don't know, I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. Usually what I like to do is I like to have very um, easy uh, like front lighting sources. So we're gonna say that our light in this instance is coming from basically where we're looking at Lulu and maybe like above. So it's kind of like a sunlight, okay? Very cute. Very cute, easy to do front ambient lights. I like that. Okay, so remember how we talked about what color was Lulu's skin? Ah! Now we're gonna paint it in. Now you've done, basically I like to think about it this way. You've done all the hard work. Now it's time to go in and start having some fun. So we are gonna pick soft brushes, right? Soft brushes. And before we go all crazy on the skin, we wanna make sure that we lock it, right? Choose your layer. If you're working on Adobe Photoshop CC, then you can grab all these layers and lock them at the same time. And that basically allows it so that way, basically if you don't lock it, here's what's gonna happen. So you're gonna be like, okay, well, let's paint some more of the iris, okay? Let's paint some more of the iris. And then you're gonna go in there and start painting and then you're like, oh, what's happening? See, you didn't lock your pixels. Don't do not do that, don't do that. See, if you lock your pixels and then paint the iris, see, now I can change the color of the iris, whatever color I want. I don't have to worry about going out. I, I already did all the hard work and now we can just have fun. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, so anyway, back to the skin. Back to the skin. So let's go ahead and get to it. So let's think about our nice hot uh, sunlight hitting Lulu's skin. What color is that going to give us? Probably something right about there. Give us a nice hot pink. Okay. So I'm gonna gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start just laying this in. Okay. So watch how I do this. And I'm working with a soft brush for a reason. I'm not going in here and being like, okay, let's have like a hard shadow like right there and like paint that out and then like a hard light there and like there. Actually, you could do that technically. You could do that. But for the most part, what I like to do is I like to think soft first. Do soft lighting first. What the heck is going on? What did I do? Oh, there we go. Think soft lighting first, okay? Soft lighting first, and then you can grab those shadows and kind of put them back in there, okay? So let's go ahead and have some there. Here's basically what I like to do. Okay, so I'll kind of paint in my lights like this. And then what I like to do is I will actually grab those shadows and check this out. Really, really cool. <laughs> Using unholy art magics, Hammer the Shark says. <laughs> yes, that is what we are doing today. So here's the cool thing about the versatility of the soft brush. So you can make it really big and have soft transitions like that, but then you can make it small and check this out. We're gonna have cast shadows from that hair, right? So make that brush really small 
and you can start cutting back into the light. And look at that. Instant cast shadow. You like that, don't you? Only on the K and Kale show can you learn that. Only on the K and Kale show. You will not learn that anywhere else. Nowhere else will you learn that. All right. So anyway, um, but one thing that I am noticing is that um, upon just even just laying down these colors, I'm noticing that I'm going to want a lot more contrast in the skin. So what I'm going to be doing is actually bringing some more heavy contrast into my shadows. So we're actually going to bring it down like this. And let's go ahead and start dropping some heavier shadows in there, heavier cast shadows. And what this is going to start doing is it's going to start giving us the impression that the light is brighter. Because basically what happens when a bright light, the way you make something, a scene look bright is just upping the contrast between the lights and the darks. So basically you just paint more, the easiest way to say it is just paint darker shadows. That's basically the way that I like to think about it. But up your contrast too, up your contrast. And the reason why that's happening is because basically, you know what happens when you look at a bright light, your iris shrinks and it lets less light in. Isn't that interesting? Notice what I just said, lets less light in. So basically, you're basically like if you could see into a dark space, when your eyes let in less light, basically those shadows become darker. Interesting. Interesting, no? Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm actually going to turn them a little bit darker, kind of bluish too. And kind of hue shift. We're all about hue shift in here. Let's go ahead and hue shift that sucker right into that blue. Oh, lovely, lovely Lulu. And then let's have a nice hard cast shadow there. And let's have a nice soft transition there. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, so we're getting close. And the reason why I'm pushing Lulu's skin more pink is because I'm thinking about the color of the sun. Once it starts blowing out the color, basically this is what we call it, blowing out the color which is basically, it's turning it very close to white. So you're gonna start to see the effect that I'm talking about. See how now this light appears much more, um, much more intense, it feels much more intense. And that is because we're freaking awesome and we know how light works. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and add in, but let's not forget the most important part of all our girls. And that is our blush. Blush makes all girls look super cute. So let's not forget that. Oh my gosh, there we go. Little bit of blush on the cheeks there. Oh, that is so precious. Precious, a little on the fingertips, a little on the shoulders. You just, you gotta love that. You can't, you can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. All right. Now, last but not least, you're noticing some areas that feel a little bit muddy, feel a little bit kind of desaturated and boring. Now, the way that we're going to add life back into these is we are going to saturate our transitions, saturate those transitions. So, and this is known as subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering, basically revitalizing those areas, make them look freaking sick. Yeah. Uh, ub. Uh, that's good enough. <laughs> good enough. All right. So that's a good start for her skin. I like that. So let's take a look at where we started. Boom. See, very simple. Starting with dark colors, adding in light. Ah, love it. Now I'm going to go back in here and add some more. I'm going to add a little bit more shadow to the bottoms of these. It's because I want that. I want a little bit more contrast in the shadows, but not too much, not too much. Uh, also, I want a little bit of blush there. That looks really cute. Oh, that's so precious. That is so precious. Love it. Okay, actually, she's looking a little sunburnt there. Let's go ahead and, why does she look sunburnt? There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's what we needed. We needed that color. Yeah. Good, that's what we we're looking for. All right, so let's take that principle that we just learned about, okay? That being dark shadows and very bright lights, and let's go ahead and apply those to the other parts of the drawing, okay? So let's start with, oh, you know where this is gonna look really good is in the floaties. The floaties is gonna look really good here. So let's go ahead and do this. So we've got our nice dark floaty color. In fact, let's make it even darker. 
even more darkness okay, on these floaties. And as a rule of thumb, as orange gets darker, it turns redder. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have these nice deep dark reds. Now let's throw in the sunlight, okay? So we're thinking bright, very, very, very bright. What color is this gonna be? It's gonna be basically like this, okay? So we've got color going right there. Boom, mm, mm, looks good. Oh wait, no, it needs to be more like that. Yeah, there we go, that's the color I was looking for. See how that just looks really bright now? See how that looks like a bright light shining on something? We like that. We like that a lot. And then because we're awesome and we know about subsurface scattering, let's go ahead and apply that to our floaty. Uh, basically the easiest way that I think about doing this is, okay, so the light goes in, it's sort of like a translucent material. So let's add in a little bit of like a underglow like that. That should, that should do it pretty good like that. And then let's, I actually wanna blow this out even more. I wanna blow this out even more. So let's push it even further towards yellow. Ah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe right there, that, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good, good, good. All right, now let's not forget about our cast shadows because our light is coming from up top. So we're probably not gonna have a lot of light hitting right here. So let's cut back into that. Cut back into that and add that cast shadow back in. And notice how I'm doing this all with one brush. One brush. We can go back in and add texture later, but don't worry about that. Don't worry. Right now we're just right now we're just getting a feel for it. We're seeing if we even like what we're doing here. And this is what I call laying in, getting like quick color ideas. You know, getting quick color ideas. Because hey, worst case scenario. You don't like what you got, you can always go back to the beginning. You can always go back to here, right? But for right now, I'm just very quickly getting a quick idea for, is this the lighting setup that I want? Do I want it to have like the hard shadow, bright light feeling? Um, and my answer is yes, so I'm gonna keep going for it. All right, so let's move on to the hair. Let's move on to the hair. I know you guys wanna see how I do the hair. So because I have cleverly set up the lines, that way they basically already look good with the hair, um, this is how, what the hair is gonna do. So we're gonna have very, very bright highlights going through the hair, okay? And because it is sunlight, we're gonna kick it. Even though her hair is uh, purple, the highlights are actually going to be very, very kind of almost orange, okay? So we're gonna have a very, very hot highlight that goes right through here, okay? Like that, like that, okay, cool. Actually, before we do the highlight, let's actually do the hair. Let's do the hair. So let's, I wanna kick her hair like really kind of like red. Very, very bright red. Oh yeah, that looks great. Whoops, actually wait, hang on. <laughs> Might have some trouble with this. Okay, okay, okay. But the shadows of the hair, we know, are going to be very dark. So let's not forget about those shadows. The hair has shadows too. Let's go ahead and get those shadows in there, nice and dark. There we go. Yeah. Let's see, do I want it to be like that? I'm just kind of choosing my colors really quickly, trying to figure out what exactly I'm looking for here. That might be it. Is that it? There we go, close enough. Close enough. Okay, now we can go ahead and put those highlights through there. Ah, lovely. Okay, so we're gonna have a highlight there, a highlight there, maybe a little one there, a little one, kind of going through there. And let's make that sucker really bright. And we'll go back in and fix this up later, but overall we're gonna have something looking like that. Looking like that. Cool. So in a moment, guys, I'm going to get ready to take your questions. So get those ready, have those ready to go. I will be taking your questions. Now, the other thing that I want you guys to consider is, uh, I'm thinking ahead of time, right? Because we're gonna have light entering this water underneath and then reflecting back up onto her, 
her body and her face, basically everything. So basically, I'm also thinking about the underside or the shadows are going to be colored blue, okay? Almost like this aqua color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this aqua and I'm gonna lay a little bit of this into like, say for instance, the ear and then the hair. There you go. <gasps> Whoa, that looks cool. All right, and let's also add a little bit into the skin, you know, a little bit on the edges of the skin. Now watch what this does. Watch what this does very closely. You will be amazed. Check this out. Okay, so you put that underneath in the shadows. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now you are rounding the character and making it look freaking awesome. A little bit of that in there. Coloring those shadows blue. And now you can see, whoa, there's like multiple light sources happening here. There's multiple light sources and it feels a lot cooler, right? Isn't that cool to have that transition go from that pink to that blue? And the reason why is because this water, right? The water is reflecting up. And a good example of this is whenever you see somebody in the pool, all that water or all the light that goes into the pool and then gets reflected back up through the water. If you ever look at the underside of your arm, it's like a greenish aqua color. It looks really cool. So that's the effect that we are going for here. We're adding that into our shadows, okay? We're having a good old time while we're doing it. Okay, another good example of this, probably we're gonna see a lot of this effect on the hair back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this really quick. I'm also gonna add it into this hair. And I want this to be like really aqua. So let's like push it even further. Let's like go like this. See if that looks cool. Yep, look at that. Reflected light, oh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Love it. And uh, also, consequently, we'll also take the eyes. Where's where's our eyes? Okay, those are the eyes of the, that character. Where's the squid eyes? No. This is why you should always label your things. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna look for that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and open up some question catapults, shall we? Cast your questions now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, any questions you have, please cast them over the castle walls. Please cast them over the castle walls. We'll have ourselves a good old time. Have ourselves a good old time. Go ahead and do it. And in the meantime, I'm going to uh, uh, get back to this. Here we go. Hat one. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So a good example of this is hat. The hat. So let's go ahead and take this color, and I'm just gonna like go ahead and just put this into these areas. Okay. Go ahead and put these into these areas. Okay. So I'm like kind of pre. I'm almost like putting in the reflected light first in this case. Okay. So look right over here are these tentacles. Okay, so I'm putting in reflected light there, reflected light there. Very good. I'm actually gonna push it even green too. I want it to go like green. Yeah, that's the color I'm looking for. That really cool transition to green. Love it, love it. And then check this out. Okay, so let's go back to, where was that? Oh crap, it was, there we go, hat one. Okay, so we got that cool green in there, right? Now watch this. Let's take that white. Now we really want to blow this to like kingdom come, okay? So let's go ahead and push this like super, super white. Oh crap, dang it, dang it. I did that whole thing while you guys weren't, oh. I'm so bad, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll do it over again. Or I'll use the history, all right, the awesome history. Let's go back, back in history. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the white, okay? And I'm adding, see what I did there? Added that reflected light right into the tentacles. I know you guys are saying in the chat, like, we can't see you. We can't see you. I know you're saying that. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so bad. <laughs> but anyway, I was just adding that into this. Okay, but check this out. This color, check this out. I can, like, bust the toolbar off the side of my screen. Okay, but this color right here, this is the exact color I was looking for, that awesome aqua color. Very, very cool. So I'm adding that into my shadows, okay? Adding that into the shadows there, see that? Right there, thinking about that reflected light. Right there. 
And now we're caught up to where we were, and now I can demonstrate what I was about to do. So I chose this very, very bright yellow. I don't always go totally white. I like to add in, let's say it goes like really, really yellow. Give it a little bit of orange in there. Now let's go ahead and drop that color onto here, a very, very bright white. Ah, you see what we're doing now? Awesome, huh? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Actually, it's probably gonna look more like that. Okay, that's good, that's good. It's good, it's good. See, now we're properly lit. Now we're all properly lit. Didn't even have to, didn't even have to think about it that much. <laughs> Let's light that sucker up. Light that sucker up. Boom, that looks freaking sick. And it'll look even better once we light the hat. But in the meantime, Let's go ahead and take a couple questions. Uh, for a new tablet, would it be better to get an Intuos Pro or the cheapest Cintiq like at 800 bucks? Really, Aliano, I got a couple things that I want you to ask yourself. And that is, do you want to work, do you, do you have to have a Cintiq where you're actually drawing on the screen? Basically, people who don't know, a Cintiq is a tablet where it's basically your computer screen and you're drawing right on it. Very handy, but unless you have some sort of a setup where it's gonna be comfortable, comfortable for your neck and you're doing this for eight hours a day, you're gonna be doing this type of thing. You're gonna be leaning forward and you're gonna be straining your neck. This is the problem that I ran into while I was working back in the studio for Riot, is I loved working on it, but overall, it just kind of started hurting my neck after a, like after a year, okay? But the reason why I like the just regular tablets is because yes, it takes more time to kind of get the hand-eye coordination, but I can look straight ahead and I can have my working hand right down here and I have good posture throughout the whole day. I don't have back problems anymore. All I, ha I only have wrist problems. This is great, it's great. So <laughs> that's what I want you to ask yourself. It just really depends on how long you're gonna be drawing all day, or at least have a backup tablet because it is nice, but I personally recommend just getting the tablet because you'll have better posture. All right, uh, question, uh, JW Pirate asking, how do you choose the right colors for a project? Do you plan the environmental interactions beforehand? In general, yes. And that's kind of what I've talked to you guys about today. And that is, I think about my environment. In this case, yes, it's going to be a white background. So I'm free to basically say, okay, the, the biggest color choices here are going to be the lighting, the exposure. And that's a fancy way of saying, hey, let's make it a really bright light so we have a giant or a big difference between the light parts and the dark parts. See, like the skin here, the contrast between here and here. There's a very, very high contrast. Makes it look like it's a bright scene. A bright scene. A bright scene. <laughs> All right. But in the meantime, I wanna really drive this home with the tube, because this tube is really gonna illustrate everything that we've learned today. Okay, so let's go, here's a great example, and I'll do this example for you right now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm thinking about when I lay in my first colors, is I'm not thinking about the local color, which is a fancy way of saying, okay, what is the real color of the tube? But rather, I'm thinking about the, the shadow of the tube, the shadow of the tube, okay? What, is this, what does this tube look like with no light on it, okay? Then you get something like this. Next up, you could go to say, uh, sometimes I like to go to reflected light, and in this case, we will do reflected light. So we've got this aqua, like I said, this aqua that is coming from the water. In fact, I should probably, I'm gonna color the water really quick just so I can better illustrate this. Okay, so basically, we've got this light that's gonna be emanating from the water down here. Okay, it's gonna look something like this, because it's gonna be magic water. Magical water, oh yay. And it, you know, it's got like sunlight and stuff going into it, so it's gonna look like really cool. It's gonna look like super slick. Super slick, okay? So we got magic water, whoop de doo Magical water, whoop de doo Okay, so that's where that light is coming from, okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and show that on the tube. So we have purple, right? With an aqua interacting with it. So it's gonna push this color more blue. More blue, we're probably gonna end up something around here. And this is really something that I urge you guys to try out for yourselves. This is something that you have to learn on your own. Because it's like, how, you might ask, how did I know to choose that blue for that color light interacting with the tube? And the honest answer is, 
it's just experimentation. Look, I'll just lay it down and I'll ask myself, does that color look like, does that color right there look like this light is interacting with it? And if the answer is yes, then congratulations, you're a color master. You're a color master. Okay, so I'll add a little bit more of that in, reflected light. But now we have another problem. We have another issue, and that is our local color, our local color, our sunlight. Okay, now this is where you like to think, okay, what is the actual color of this tube? And that is, okay, it's this color. But because it's sunlight and it's going to get blown out, we're going to increase the temperature of it by pushing it more red, more red. I, I swear, I'm probably like making so many of your brains like explode right now. And I do apologize. I just really want to get as much value into this as possible. <laughs> like this is like all these calculations are going on in my head as I choose colors. And I'm trying to just give you like a peek into it. So that way, not necessarily that you have to get everything, but like watch the tutorial over a couple times and just kind of pick up on a couple things. Like maybe you'll just focus on reflected light. Then you'll say, okay, color temperature. What the heck does that mean? Maybe I should look up a couple other videos about that. But I'm basically just trying to explain everything that's going on in my head as I'm doing it. But anyway, okay. So then we have the actual color going in here and that's going to be lighting the tube like that. And voila, look at that. Now you have a really cool hot uh, light happening here. And don't forget about your cast shadows. <gasps> Brilliant, look at that. See how I put in that cast shadow on that pole? Oh, I know you like that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit there and that looks good. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Keenan Lafferty's thought process in a nutshell. And I really wanna do that yellow part too. I'm gonna take one more question then we're gonna end today's show. I'm liking where this is going though. This is looking really good. I'm liking this a lot. Okay, last question's coming in. Wow, you guys got so many of them. Oh, uh, maybe I'll take a couple more since you guys are just so awesome today. All right. Um, <laughs> Kane1048 is asking, it takes a long time to do one drawing digitally, but I can do the same drawing in a few minutes on paper. Oh, do you think it's not very, uh, it's not very beneficial to only practice drawings that take a long time? Uh, I don't know, I don't exactly understand, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but you talked about drawing, it feeling like you have more dexterity in your sketchbook, and that is something that is normal. Like I personally, when I'm starting my concepts, I like to work with pen on paper because I have so much more control over it. Whereas the way that I work in here, in Photoshop, is much different. It's more experimental. It's just, it's not as, I don't know. It, it, to be honest, it's not as good for concept thing for me. But it's different for everybody. So I would urge you to try a bunch of different things. But that is a normal thing to feel like um, you're not as fast. Like you're not as fast in one thing as uh, you are in another. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and clean that up. Oh, Ooh, nice. Nice. Oh, let's go ahead and get that there. Love it. See, but now you can see what I'm talking about. So we've gone from this. Now check it out. Our lighting is coming together. You can see our beautiful light taking shape on our Lulu. And it's looking really cute. And it looks bright, doesn't it? And that's because of our contrast. Okay, last question. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to call it. Um... <laughs> Ooh, Carrie Ann Couch uh, definitely said the magic word. Uh, so in your Emma comic, I see some awesome pages with really dynamic, dramatic lighting, like using a lot of solid black. I'd love to see the color choosing process with this because that's where I run into a lot of trouble. Could you possibly make a video on coloring with dramatic, harsh lighting? Um, yes, I believe I could do that. I could do that. Yeah, in fact, there's some upcoming scenes. I know it's been a while since I've been doing the comic, but trust me, guys, it's on the horizon. Good things are coming. Good things are coming, trust me. Um, but yes, there are some good scenes coming up where I can show that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry that I cannot take any more questions. You guys are freaking awesome and you got so many. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show, but before we take off, I do want to say, oh crap, I'm freaking awesome and I didn't even pull up the Patreon, I'm so bad. Okay, but before we go, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to my awesome sponsors, AKA Defenders of the Cane Kale Kingdom. I bow down to you, David Cariello and Laura Bashir. If you'd like to check out my sponsor's artwork and you're watching on YouTube, 
uh, there's a link to their artwork in the description. And you can also go to my DeviantArt and check them out. They are my sponsors. They're freaking awesome. If you'd like to sponsor the show and get awesome things for yourself, awesome goodies. I love this pitch. This is freaking awesome. Uh, if you'd like to get awesome goodies for yourself, head on over to the Kane Kale Patreon. And if you're watching on YouTube, click that link in the bottom right. You can pledge whatever you want. Oh, and hey, how about that? This PSD is going to be going up on there today. So if you want to download it, go ahead and go pledge, get cool stuff, and have an awesome time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me live on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it. <laughs> live on Twitch. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. And I will see you guys on Thursday. I'm actually thinking instead of doing a thoughtful, we might just continue this. We might just continue this. I don't know. We'll see what happens though. But until next time, you guys take care. See ya.